Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ears to the East, where it is Hello. I and Benedict today. Hi, Benedict. How are you doing, mate? <laughs> hey, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Well, I was okay. I was okay until recently when I saw the video you did with Neon, where you um, there where you uh, spoke terribly about non-metal music, but most specifically about music of the poppy variety. Um, however, I, I will be honest, uh, I know it was all done in <laughs> good humour, but you were definitely the moderate wing of the uh, burn pop to the ground party. Uh, so I, I, believe, uh, I believe it is fair, as Neon is having a day off, to bring you over to be the moderate part of my... Um, my revenge tour, which is basically what this I will try to be, but as always, I have to be honest. <laughs> well, I, I do remember you did still you did still back up a few comments on that, which I I, I did take exception to. <laughs> but no, this this is the kind of fun thing. So I mean, like in the same way that uh, this is why I get on with Neon so well and with yourself actually is because in the same way that Neon, he's definitely a metalhead. He loves his metal. He's always telling people to stay metal. Um, he'll still listen to pop. Um, and, you know, I actually, you know, he, he mentioned about me liking Hannah Beer. I do like some metal stuff as well, but obviously we both draw our lines at certain places. And today is the perfect opportunity to talk about this because today we got the news that Silent Siren are back. I did a whole video about this. Silent Siren, quintessential example of a band who, they're a pop rock band, but they lean into the pop side. I know you haven't heard Silent Siren, so I'm not going to dwell too much on that. But... One of the reasons I wanted to start with them is because Silent Siren have something. They have a keyboard player. Oh, whoop de doo Why is that so special? Um, because for me, it's the poppiest thing about them. And yet, keyboards is a good place to start because a keyboard is literally the instrument that can be any sound you want. And I remember in your chat with, uh, I like the fact you look like you're on the stand here at court, but <laughs> I, like, I like the fact that when you, sorry, you, I noticed that when you had that conversation with Neon, there was one line in particular that really blew my mind and made me want to throw my laptop out the window, which is when you guys were talking about how you listen to metal bands and there's so much range and they're so distinct. And yet when you listen to pop bands, there's not the same range of distinct sounds. I'm calling bullshit on that. Bullshit! I think we kind of mentioned that you will do that. <laughs> and yes, I am. I don't care about being predictable. Pop, pop is freedom from... It's not even a genre because it's freedom from the constraints of That's kind of, of what sound. I wanted to ask. That's kind of a question I have about pop music because, like, what is the... What would you say is the essence of pop music? Because a lot of pop music, especially Japanese pop music, there's a lot of influences, I would absolutely agree, like jazz, funk, whatever, rock, even metal. Um, but what would you say is the essence of pop music, like a pure pop song? What is that? Okay, um, I'll, be, I'll be honest before I say this. I actually, as much as I'm joking, I really went away and had a lot of time on my little walks around Tokyo, really thinking about what you guys said, because I came to the same first thought as you. What is pop? Because everyone always says pop is not a genre. It's just popular music. But it's like, it has to be something. Um, so I kind of looked, the way I thought about it, I thought about it like a graph. Let's try and make my window a graph. So from bottom to top is basically some edit. How, how popular something is. How popular something is. And then is from, that where the name comes from? Pop from popular? Uh, yeah. It, it, okay, I was wondering if you're being sarcastic or not. <laughs> so, like, down at the bottom, you've got like really insanely complicated stuff that just no one will listen to. Super avant garde, melt banana kind of what's going on here. And then you've got stuff which is super um, just popular. And again, we're talking about Japanese pop here because we all agree Western pop sucks. Um, and then on the other side, you've got heaviness going from something that isn't heavy all the way to something that really is heavy. Now, for me, it's a, it's a categorical error to compare them because metal is basically in this area here where it's all heavy. It doesn't matter if it's popular or not. It can be uh, super complicated, but it has to be heavy. It ha can be like super likable, but it has to be heavy. And then pop is the top bar. So it can be mm -hmm. really heavy. Pop can be as heavy as metal. 
but it has to be quintessentially something that is designed to be accessible. And I think that's the thing, accessibility. Now, I like a lot of music, like I mentioned, Melt Banana, I like a lot of music that's not accessible, but I think music being accessible, music designed to be likable, you can go too far. You can have common denominator music that's designed to be so inoffensive that anyone could listen to it and it has no personality. But there is this good, thick, good band around here where music is trying to be likable, but it doesn't lose its soul. And in that band, you've got everything from the softest, sweetest, cutest kawaii all the way through to like, you get like Wagamama Rakia. Wagamama Rakia are pop. But they're as heavy as any metal band because pop doesn't stop you putting metal guitars in. It does not prohibit you from using any sound. It just says, try yeah, I mean, to not I was kind of joking you. about pop coming from popular, but actually if you go, if you take that definition, any genre can be pop if it's like accessible and yeah. I mean, if you take something- Wouldn't you say? Or... Yeah, I mean, if you take something If you have like... a metal song that's, if you would say metal is the pop most popular genre in the world, like just hypothetically, then it would be pop, right? Well, that, 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 see, see, that's an interesting, because when you get a, like a popular niche, so metal, I would say is an, is probably an, uh, yeah, but I guess you're kind of right. I mean, if you look about, like, you look at like um, around about the year 2000, 2001, what was like the most popular song? Rolling by Limp Biscuit. I mean, that that was like number one in the charts everywhere. Um, and yes, that might not be your quintessential example of what most people consider to be metal, but it's definitely in the metal space. And it was pop metal. So you had a lot of metal people saying, oh, that's too pop. And you had a lot of pop people saying, oh, that's actually quite metal. Um, you look at like Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. It's like, yes, okay, that's a very sort of poppy song, but it doesn't stop it being a loud, roaring rock song. I mean, okay, it's not metal, I don't think, but you know, it's still, it, it, pop can base, it, it's a genre, it, it's not a genre thing, it's a category distinction. You can't dislike pop, in my opinion, unless you just don't like music that other people like. <laughs> I'm just kind of thinking about like things like because, you know, in the general perception, you have things like Michael Jackson, who is called the king of pop. Yes. But yes. his music, like his music actually, yeah, it's not like its own genre. It's taking also from different things like rock or funk or disco R &D, and things like that. Disco. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you look at, um, so obviously like Elvis, he was referred to as the king of like rock and roll, wasn't he? Um, but, you know, I mean, in the day, his music was described as pop because, you know, it, it was the pop music of his day. Um, someone, someone who was alive then is going to tell me I was wrong. But, you know, it would have categorically been considered the pop music of his day. Um, you know, you look at things like, so, for example, you, you take something like, um, uh, like a, a Bohemian Rhapsody. That song is, most people consider, would be considered quite complicated, goes into a proggy territory, but it had a pop quality. You know, it was not, you know, I mean, a lot of people talk about the fact that Queen had a lot of metal and heavy metal influences, which they obviously did in, like, Brian May's guitar playing. But they When you say that it had a pop audience. quality, what do you mean? Like, do you mean an accessible quality? Yes, they managed to take something which was like avant-garde, yeah. but actually make it something where it's like, yeah, in the mainstream, this works. Um, and for me, the problem is with modern Western pop is that they have lost the imagination of how to take complex things and make them accessible, which is why Japanese pop is so great, is that it manages to appeal as much to the masses but it hasn't done that by watering it down and going the safe route. Sometimes, yes. But as a general, it's like, no, let, let's try and give you something that is complex, but make it palatable for, you know, as palatable for a, a diehard music fan and for a girl who's going to school listening to it on her earbuds. Funny, because I feel like metal or like Japanese metal is kind of doing the opposite. Because you have like a lot of generic things in the West, but they are not really trying to make it like more accessible, in my opinion. They just make it a lot weirder and more chaotic in, in metal. 
If you go to things like Hanabi or something, you don't have things like that in the West. So, I mean, so how would you describe Hanabi? You'd say Hanabi is like the attempt to make metal more palatable. Not really, actually. The, the I wouldn't say that. To make it less more palatable. the opposite. I mean, it has like these elements, but overall, it feels very chaotic, in my opinion. So the interesting like, thing. I don't think a lot of people would would get into that if they are not already in like a metal vein. Now, th this is interesting because obviously this is where subjectivity comes into it. And of course, all of this conversation is subjective. But um, so I, I've, and Hannah Beer is a great place to discuss this because I've often said that with Hannah Beer, for me, as someone who I like, you know, we discussed this before, I like a lot of things in metal. You know, I can enjoy the screamo in places, you know, but I like less of it. You know, I like double kick drums, but not all the time. You know, I like the elements in contrast to other things um but hannah beer for example is one of the groups who they've got me more on board um i can enjoy their music because of the fact that when i listen to their music it hands out an olive branch it has things of it's not constant screamo the screamo comes in and it's a contrast to the sort of funny cute bits like you get like the pardon pardon me i keep forgetting what the name of that is in japanese but the, it's because it's not sumi i said it's something else but the pardon me song that one it the metal bits are accessible because it hands you the olive branch of doing something which is not metal having kind of like pop qualities so i don't in a way i think the chaotic element is probably quite palatable to pop fans because i think Pop fans are okay with chaotic music so long as it has a, a a sort of a readable form. I guess we want to be able to follow the song from point A to B and enjoy the journey rather than feel like the song's trying to shake you off, you know, trying to like blow your mind. We want to be able like to follow aggressive the stuff not so much. Well, th this is where I often wonder with like a lot of my taste in the more progressive stuff. I wonder because, you know, again, you look at something like Bohemian Rhapsody. That, I, I would actually argue that compared to a lot of progressive songs, it takes a lot of very harsh turns, Bohemian Rhapsody, um, which are probably harder to follow if you are not haven't already heard it a million times. And I do think, you know, being aired in radio play gave it a lot of ability to seep into people's consciousnesses. But I think that, you know, like, it, it is interesting, that line of what, is enough to throw people off. I think that's when we get into a, uh, a subjective territory. But I do think you can have songs that are quite progressive, but can still be considered poppy. Because I think it's, a, it's as we've discussed before, it's something of a fallacy of modern pop writing, especially in the West, and you know, modern writings in general, that people can't take something unless it's a 4-4 four, four rhythm. It's just strictly not true. It's not true. And also that it's a lot of times very repetitive you have not a lot of variety in, uh, I, in the song itself i'm just going to say if i always I, do this when we talk about structure chorus verse chorus bridge verse chorus that's a good i, I will get back to that point i'm just going to say for anyone at home just because I, I always say this and people are bored of me repeating it when we say a four four time signature that's when you count like one two three four one two three four that's when that's your rhythm structure which is kind of what most you know contemporary not all but most contemporary songs are so just for anyone who's I always tried to avoid you know, using musical terms because I want this to be an accessible conversation. So I thought I'd throw that in there. Um, but yeah, you make a good point about the verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus thing as well. Um, which um, I feel is, if anything, is like particularly overdone in modern metal. I think modern metal is quite a... Um, quite... It uh, has a lot to answer for in that. Like, well, actually, maybe not metal so much as hard rock, but I mean... This is, and especially like I've always said, I love a bridge. For me, a bridge can make a song because it's the thing that makes the last chorus build up. If you're going to have a song with that structure, the bridge is always the bit where you take what you've got and you take it up to the next level. Um, and so many metal songs, they're just content to, all right, guitar solo. All right, hold up. That, that to me, that's, that's a lack of creativity in writing. I'm not saying they all do that, but way, way, way more guitar solos being used as fill in we couldn't be bothered bridges in metal than there is in pop i mean pop has the middle eight which is overused which is just where you just repeat a couple of chords and then just do a chorus again but um you know 
I think that there is much more of the excessive use of the guitar solo instead of a writing a bridge in metal than there is lazy bridges in pop. I feel that's kind of obvious because metal is guitar-driven music. So obviously we'll have guitar everywhere. It's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you're right. Uh, but to me also, the most... Um, the most interesting metal music is the ones that don't follow that typical formula. So I guess where we go in here is that you're kind of saying that there's this area here in our graph, the area where we're, we're heavy, but we're going into a sort of an oddball territory, which is solely within the metal sphere. But pop can't really go down into this more complex territory. It can't go... Uh... Mm, no, that's not really what I'm saying. I'm thinking more like... You know, actually thinking about what is the, because I ask you, what is the essence of pop? I'm thinking like, what is the essence of metal, that it's heavy? You know, the thing I enjoy most about metal is not that it's heavy, it's that it has all these kinds of different influences and also goes, yeah, it's not always sounding the same. And to me, it's like one of the most diverse genres, but actually thinking about it, pop is probably pretty similar in that case. I think there is... It so takes from a lot of different places. There is this area down this part of the graph where it wouldn't be called pop because it's not so accessible. And this is an area where Japan goes into, I think, because in Japan, people are more willing to listen to more insane stuff. Um, so you can go into this area here where it's not heavy, but it's doing crazy berserk things. Um, and for me, you get that a lot of the time with a lot of these really madcap sort of things, you know, um, and I, I feel like that's that's kind of where I agree. There's this interesting area where maybe music is not accessible, where it's doing technical things. But I think another fallacy is that people think that only happens in the heavy area. The, you know, I mean, like you said, you don't listen to metal because it's heavy. You listen to it because you like the technical side. Well, I would argue there's plenty of technical stuff going on where there's like no distortion at all. You get like plenty of music where it's, it's all keyboard music and it's super complex. Um, the thing is, is that metal almost feels like it has a monopoly on complexity, which I think comes from the fact that metal is obviously a genre very much built on, you know, people learning their craft, learning to be superb musicians, whereas pop a lot of the time will rely on, you know, keyboards, programmed stuff. You know, you look at some of these insane, like, pop songs that you get in Japan. Some of them are pre-programmed. No one's actually playing an instrument, but not always, you know. Um, so I think metal gets the credit because of the musicianship. But I, this is probably where the line comes in. Of course I like good musicianship, but at the end of the day, that's not what I really care about. All I care about is the waveform that comes through my ears. If the sound is pleasing and good and well-written, I don't care how you made it. Just give me a good song. Um, yeah, that's I can agree on. So uh, that that's my... that's. That's my argument kind of made there as best as I can. But I, this is, and by the way, this is not to downplay. Metal has a lot of really great complex stuff in it. And I do enjoy a lot of metal. I just feel there's this weird thing where people think they, it has a monopoly on it. And to get back to actually one of the questions I'd like to ask you, slightly flipping it, is that you mentioned about what the essence of metal is. And this for me is much more complex. And I always draw it back to that line of the fact that people will often... I've always said there's a sort of weird continuum, a weird scale between hard rock and metal. And people will often argue, you know, that is metal, that is hard rock. And for me, the main thing that seems to define hard well, metal over hard rock is that hard rock doesn't require riffing complexity or solos, whereas metal seems to require riffing. It seems to require solos. It seems to require stuff that is you know, in that line, a lot of sort of walking lines, a lot of things where the guitar is, you know, what, the it's a lot, a lot about rhythm, yeah. Rhythm, that's interesting, okay. Because See, I think a, a big part of metal is like the actual drumming. Because, yeah, sometimes if you listen to a metal song without the drums, or you would change the drums to have like a lot less double pedals or just doing less in general, putting a more simple beat on it, it could actually sometimes maybe pass off as a hard rock, more or more like a hard rock song, I would say. Not every time, of course, but yeah, I think a lot of it comes down to the drumming. I, I'm going to, so I, I actually, I, I can agree. 
Uh, I'm going to slightly play devil's advocate here and just test that opinion a little bit with you. Um, so also like the mixing on the drums, they like they sound really heavy. I don't always know if they sound. I mean, a lot of the time, some of the heaviest drums I've heard are in pop. Um, really? Not, not always, but sometimes because pop has a big thing for beats, you know, pop like. And so if you get like a, a really heavy beat in a pop song, I feel like a lot of times it's like more in uh, like an electronic bass drum, true. for example. True. True. Um, but then again, there's a lot of affected kick drums in metal. I mean, you hear a lot of the time the EQ done on the kick yeah. drum is insane to make it like really sort of fill up as much sound as possible. Um, so what I would maybe counter on that, and I'm not, again, I'm not disagreeing, but I want to test that opinion a bit because you, you, when you said about rhythm, I was really interested that that's where you went to. Um, with metal, I never, I do accept it's got rhythmic qualities, but I never think of that as being one of its strong points. And a lot of time when we're talking about things like double kicks, I go back to that thing where um, the old expression they say of bass players, you know, a great bass player because they know when to stop playing as much as when to play. Yeah, you know, it's the gaps that make it rhythmic. I mean, I'm a big jazz fan. I know that a lot of people aren't. And you look at jazz, you know, jazz loves its rhythm and jazz is all about the spaces between the notes. It sounds so cliche, but it's true. It's because those spaces are where you get more impact when you come back in. And I think that when you've got a double kick drum, like rumbling, that is a rhythm, but I never feel that as being a particularly, it always feels to me like the most simple of rhythms. Like the, and you know, when you've got riffing where you're playing a note on every single beat and you know, every quarter between the beat, it, it almost feels like the opposite of rhythm. It feels like, no, you're just filling in all the spaces. Um, I mean, there are other parts like that, but I think good metal varies that a lot. You have yeah. like parts where just the double pedals, but there's also other parts. And like, I uh, had to think of like love bites immediately. Because sometimes you have Haruna, yeah. Haruna doing her double pedals constantly, but she's doing so much accenting while she's doing that it's more like an underlying i don't know an underlying power that's going on and the actual accenting and drumming comes from what she's doing with her hands um i do want to bring love but bites it into it's like some bit. it adds like a certain force to it i i think that i actually agree that for me love bites um and i have this argument about whether the love bites are metal but i think most people agree they're metal um, which is why I always thought the Love Bites band made thing what was is? like it was a very confusing like the, the the rivalry between their fans is very confusing because I would think if you're going to call anything hard rock and anything metal then that's band made and Love Bites they really are not in the same space um, and for me like I agree that whereas usually I find double kick drum overuse very tiring uh, Haruna from Love Bites she uses it constantly but it really works and I would put that partly down to the mix does. The mix makes it punchy, but they don't shove it in your face. It's actually relatively quiet in the mix compared to most other metal bands, but it's very well mixed so that you can really feel each pop of the kick drum. You know, so it's defined, but it's fairly quiet. And like you said, actually, she uses that just to like sort of almost like a metronome. And then she uses that metronome to just then be very sort of creative on the top level of the drum kit. You know, she's moving around the overhead. She's moving around the um, the skins, you know, the to toms and snares. So if anything, she's just, it's almost like the kick drum's kind of an irrelevant metronome just to sort of keep the ground rumbling. And then the rhythm's happening higher up. Um, I mean, but, you could also go into, for example, blast beats, because blast beats, they sometimes they sound really weird. What's like blast they beats? Are, what's blast they, beats? Uh, I don't know. I cannot explain that to you. Do you know what it is? No, but I'm, I, I love the sound of it. It sounds so dramatic. Okay, I'm going to oh, Google it. How can this. I describe this? I'm going to get you it's to like, describe it while I Google it. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it's offbeat, but it's like a constant um, back and forth between the snare and the kick drum. Like a... Oh, <laughs> the... yeah, yeah. So I don't and really it, it can sound like it doesn't really sound like a drum beat that's supporting the music. It's more like I don't know. It just shifts the whole song into a different stage or atmosphere. I think I'm. So you're talking about that sort of kick snare, quick, like really, yeah, really yeah. fast sort of machine gunning. It's really fast. Yeah. Um, I think I've heard that before, and. Yeah, so you get like a, a very short burst of that. I can kind of get that, but I often feel like something where it can work, but a lot like the scream stuff, 
I feel like a lot of the time, although it can work, it feels like it's not used in places where it does anything. It's just used in places to be loud for the sake of be loud. Yeah, I didn't want to say that's the, uh, like the best thing ever, but mm -hmm. uh, it's just the drumming in metal, I feel, can really change the song. And it's not just there to give like a yeah simple beat that you can bob your head to, but it really, it's much more its own instrument like a guitar for example than in pop in pop for example or yeah in some other music the drums are a lot simpler i think and, that um yeah. this can Do you know what i mean yeah this this can come back to when we talk about pop the problem is like like, a, like i mentioned earlier there is this general feeling that and this is true of most music that the 4/4 four, four rhythm is king but pop obviously is more likely to take that on board as it is obviously trying to be accessible. Um, but I do feel like, although we're used to a lot of very bland synth beats, I think that is more of a territory of Western pop and K-pop. But I think with J-pop, you get a lot of J-pop where the beats are actually very, you know, okay, they are all on the 4-4 thing, but they're very creative. Again, using that space um like a, a a thing which seems to be fairly popular in japan is using like latin rhythms in pop music there's a lot of um pop music in japan that uses kind of like latin rhythms underneath it that is quite creative that does really interesting things um i wish i could think of some good examples but if you think of a lot of the singer songwriters i mean i always go back to otsukurai but that's a bit of a an old example but yeah otsukurai is a good example of like uh, someone who's got that but a lot of these like poppier bands you know silent siren uh, they, they weren't the most creative that's probably the, was their weak spot is their rhythms were creative and i'm not, not just hating on hina because she left the band but um <laughs> also like you do get bands like scandal who are very creative that kind of thing um and you know if you look at bandmate who again most of us wouldn't consider them to be metal with a few song exceptions obviously extremely creative so i think there is Again, I think this is more the fact that we expect metal to have real acoustic musicians tends to lead us towards being biased towards thinking that metal does have better musicianship. And that is sometimes true. But there is a very large amount of pop, especially in Japan, where they do have real and very talented musicians. Um, yeah, that's true. Like I said in the metal video, I think you really have to distinguish between Western pop and like J-pop because J-pop also, in my opinion, it's a lot more intricate and interesting. I, I'm going to throw something else in here, actually, just to just to piss people off a little bit. I'm going to say because and Babe Metal is actually a good example of this in you know, standing in the, an odd place in this. But because a lot of Japanese pop acts, you know, the musicians are not members of the band, you know, you get like a pop group where it's a girl group or something like that. Um, you get a lot of them where they use session musicians and as a result, they actually end up having much better musicians than the average metal band because these are like, they just get the very best people, kind of like how Babe Metal did, although obviously they're on the metal side. Um, I would say like when I was like promoting the Dada Dams thing and you mentioned this as well, like Dada Dams, girl group, they had one of the most insane bass lines in their songs. Like their songs Absolutely. have insane bass lines because also all the musicians... all the reactions I watched, everyone mentioned the bass. <laughs> the bass line was like fucking brilliant, but it, it was true because the bass line was crazy. Um, and you could say, "Oh, well, that's not theirs." It's like, well, you know, they paid for it, they hired it. That's their song. No one's going to take it away from them. You know, that that's the same song. They play that recording every time. Um, so I would argue that in a way, sometimes pop actually through the thing that is held against it can sometimes have better musicianship than your average metal band, where it's just a bunch of people who yeah, met in school. I mean, obviously, it, yeah, it obviously can. And I mean, there are also metal groups that I would describe as very gener generic and repetitive. So well, I mean, it exists on both sides of the spectrum, I would say. Just a, just a quick question on the metal side. Um, I think maybe we discussed this before, but um, we talk about Western pop versus Japanese pop. I would also argue there's a, like Western metal as a general is much more boring. Um, and one of the, and hard rock as well. And one of the things that I often hold against it is that you can tell, a, even before you hear the language, you can tell a Western hard rock or metal song because the bass and the guitar are playing the same thing. Like the bassist is happy to just come in and play the same thing as the guitarist and then go home. A lot of time, yeah, that's true. Okay, you would agree on that side. 
Well, I, to be honest, I haven't listened to. I only listen to the groups I love, and those are good. <laughs> <laughs> this this actually comes down to the end example. It's like when we talk about pop and metal. It's like, well, I only listen to the good stuff. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yes, there is shit in both of them, and I just don't listen to it. <laughs> well, another interesting thing I actually realized a bit. Um, that I think a lot of Western metal or also a lot of metal that I listened to when I grew up, it was very dark in tone and also in theme and emotion, like very dark and evil. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Japanese music, even the ones like this, which I would consider to be... Oh, the, the Age of Villains, Oko, yes. The Age of Villains. Remember this from your previous Which I would consider episode. like one of the darkest and most evil albums that I know of the Japanese music or metal scene. Even that, it has like a lot of fun and catchy stuff in it. And things like that you don't have in Western music. Everything is like, or most, the most stuff, it's very evil and just that. Ugh. I remember when I was working in a, a, a studio that was underneath a guitar shop in England. And uh, we were running this studio, recording a lot of bands through there. And uh, the guitar shop over the top was run by an old fella. And they used to get magazines coming from like all the, you know, the guitar companies and the, the organizations who ran all the like instru instrumentation unions or whatever, musicians unions. They would give like freebie magazines that obviously all the shops could give out to people in the shops, which would, you know, promote, you know, you get adverts with the guitars and things coming out all this. And it would obviously have pictures of the bands. And the old fellow who ran it, he used to joke with me. It's like every time a new one came through, it's like, oh, let's sit down and open it. And the competition was, was we would go through every page looking for any band who didn't look angry. So any band who's got a smile, it's like, if we find a band who's got a smile, that's it. And it would often be months, we'd go through band photo, band photo, and never find a band who was smiling. And if we found one who would smile, we'd immediately write down their name, all right, let's give them a listen. Because um, it was just like, why do they all look so miserable? And I get it, you know, it's the darkness. But I I mean, again, Hannah Beer, like with the, I mean, I've obviously got songs like We Love Sweets, which is a bit humorous. But if you look at the songs like the Pardon Me song, Pico, Pico, um, <laughs> that song, it's it's a unhappy message, but it's a very it's not dark. It's very human. It's a very it's about like normal life. It's about you know things that real women go through, and to a certain degree, everyone has their own version of it. It's a very human kind of message. Um, do you feel like metal sometimes, message wise, because uh, obviously you get onto it for dark stuff. Do you feel like sometimes it doesn't manage to be relatable? Maybe trying to draw the juxtaposition there. Like, I think you cannot be generalize out. that. It really depends on the the groups okay. themselves. But yeah, I'm actually I'm not even into lyrics as much. I would say true. more about the whole feeling. Me too. Actually, <laughs> kind of true. Yeah. I mean, lyrics can be very important, obviously. Um. Yeah, but listening to Japanese music, I would have to look the lyrics up i cannot listen to the song and understand it so i get it's that. kind of a hindrance why i get not really reading the lyrics <laughs> yeah I, I'm, um, I'm not a big lyric reader either but um yeah the the a lot of the time you kind of like this like so i like unlucky morpheus but like i'd say unlucky morpheus like most of the times i look at the tone of their songs and i kind of it just feels like incredibly like everything is so theatrical and dramatic it feels like you kind of have to separate yourself from reality and go into this like weird other world in which unlucky morpheus exists and i enjoy that but it doesn't make it the sort of thing i can listen to on an everyday basis as much as i like their music because it feels like i have to be in this weird like that's also something i'm kind of missing in pop music like the epicness the orchestral theatrical style that's uh, more like similar to classical music uh, don't feel or uh, at least i don't know a lot of pop music that is like that because um, it's kind of contradictory to that yeah this is accessible and i can kind of yeah get into it easily i i would say the um so on one level i want to say that I disagree because I think that there's there's no reason at all why pop can't have uh, classical and orchestral bits in, and it actually does. Yeah, but can you uh, like tell me a group that does that out of your head? Well, ironically, Silent Siren did an entire concert with an orchestra, so um, 
you okay, know that, I need to check that out <laughs> it, it was it was a real shame because it was like the best idea ever but you could tell like their their audio wasn't good so you could tell like, they couldn't really hear the orchestra and so the timing was a bit bad mm -hmm. on it but still the idea was in there and you know there is music like that but what i was going to say is that you do have a point that pop does not do that anywhere near as much now off the top of my head i would argue two reasons why first of all is because like metal as a general it tends to go into that big dramatic you know it's a very intense like it's all about extreme emotions you know it's, you can never have a subtle emotion in metal because well i guess you could but it's very hard That's kind of why i love it <laughs> yeah uh, and I, I totally get that but um as a result having something big and orchestral meets that need very much head on i would say that the reason why pop doesn't have that sorry i've got a little blood coming out of my lip i'm that angry um but the reason why pop doesn't have that is really twofold first of all it tends to be a little bit more subtle. So it does use orchestras, but they tend to be subtle. They tend to come up in things like ballads, where it's more to give it a, a more swooning feeling. But the other reason yeah. as well is because I think pop doesn't need it as much because pop already, like I say, it does not have, it, by its very nature, has no restrictions on the sound use. So pop is actively using keyboards, it's using pianos, it's using jazz. You've got trumpets and things like brass regularly comes up in pop. You've got like you know, digital sounds using much more freely. It has no restraint on what it can use. So orchestras, an orchestral sound is just one of the many things you can use. Very often, I mean, like people talked about things like Unlucky Morpheus having violin, which I adore. Alia has a violin. It's like, yeah, and they use it just as much, if not more. Um, it's not just about adding a violin, it's about the whole vibe of it. But that's kind of my point, is that I feel like metal only uses the orchestra for one thing, which is a big, dramatic, intense... Um, almost, I, I know this is stereotypical, but kind of leaning towards that gothic theatrical feel. Whereas um, it's one of the many sounds Ooh. pop can use and it uses it in many different ways, but probably less because of the fact that it has so many other things it can be doing. It's just one of the items in the arsenal. I mean... But let me, let me ask you, um, because I have never been to a pop concert. Have you ever been to a pop concert before, like a big one? Because I, I would like to know yes. like about the like the contrast between like an epic metal show and an epic I don't know if it's epic an epic pop show. Well, uh, or maybe you would say it's not epic; it's something else. So rather than just um, so I, I don't want to constantly just sound like I'm fighting the case. So I only I want to give probably a relevant example. One I think probably the most no, int actually interesting. Good. Well, yeah, I, I think probably the most interesting example. I'm going to go for something a bit more atypical. Um, when I was in uh, London, I actually saw Kyari Pami Pami twice in London, which was great um, as okay. part, part of the work I was doing there. And Kyari Pami Pami, I bring her up because of the J-pop artists. I love her sound, but she works with Nakata Yasutaka, the producer. And he's got a great sound, but he's notably, he stays within his sound. You know, you hear one of his songs and it's not like Silent Siren where it's like, you know, they can be doing a rock song and then a ballad. It's like his songs pretty much all fit into a fair category. And it is a very creative sound, but it's very limited. Um, well, it doesn't have a huge amount of range. So okay. when I saw her... We'll actually check out one of some of Kiari Pamio Pamio you... next rotation you might have heard things like pom 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 I, I mean if you don't know that i'm going to expose you to that anyway just i know one song the candy candy oh because yeah, i candy, know a remix candy. of a future funk guy who did a remix of that song and then i listened to the original well you i liked it you got a reaction channel so just as a quick aside definitely do pom 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 that's like her most famous one and that like the video apart from anything else is just not the best of standing. so i think that's on oh, there. okay you're good you're good <laughs> Um, but yeah, she has, and this is not to say her songs don't have variation. It's just the, sonically, there is a, a certain style he's got that's very telling. Um, so I was kind of intrigued as her sounds kind of, you know, Candy Candy is a fairly simple example. They kind of have like uh, a cow he feels like, how is this going to translate into a big venue? And you go into the venue, lights are down low, yeah, it's dark, but you've got like the big spotlights, you know, kind of like a rock venue. It's like, how is this going to work with cow music? And then they came out and 
I realized that the songs had just been kind of mixed, remixed in a way where they were still the same song, but the focus had been shifted more on having a, a big beat. So it suddenly it was more like a club feel to it. Um, okay. The the vocals were layered up really nicely. It, it just became this sort of like big bouncing sort of fun show where, you know, the, the club beat was used to make you bounce a lot more. But then it just meant that the rest of the music didn't really have to change because the music could just be sort of fun and cute. But all you needed to do to get people up on their feet was just make the beat really big. And then you can just enjoy the same song, you know, just as sweet and cute as it is. Because all you Actually, really need like to do... sounds like something I would enjoy. <laughs> you, you would or wouldn't? I would. Yeah, I, I, I think you probably would. I get the feeling because I, I know... I, again, like I... The future funk remix of that Candy Candy song, it's kind of like that, really just increased the beat and made it a lot more yeah i don't know electronic house kind of yeah. style yeah yeah and, and i love that song <laughs> that's basically what the live show was and for me it was like I, I i was really wondering what to expect and then when it kicked in it's like immediately you recognize the song you know what it is but then it's just like so much more like the bass is being turned up you can tell the kick drum sound they've gone for is a much more sort of clubby one and you got all the same thing, all the cuteness, the kawaii and everything, but you just, all you needed to make it danceable was just more focus on the beat. And that's what they delivered. So, I mean, that's one example, but then you get a lot of um, pop shows where, yeah, again, they just focus on having more different sounds in it. I mean, if I was looking at the pop bands, which I guess I probably should veer a little bit towards because that's mostly what I'm defending. Um, I mean, I still think the pop groups have really interesting music in Japan, but the pop bands are a good example of the best of Japanese pop. They, you know, they do everything that a metal band does, but just, you know, often, like, rather than having three people on stage playing guitars, they'll have one of them who's playing a keyboard, and they'll have a little bit more variation. Um, you know, I mean... I think Alia. I, I would always actually point. I know they're not. Do they have also like epic stage setups or like long intros building up to a song and things like that? Because um, like difficult for me to remember uh, to to imagine like yeah like an epic build up and then you go into like candy candy. <laughs> um, actually, Kiari does quite a build up for her show. When her show starts, it's like the most epic build up for that. Um, so obviously, the. You do get the epic show. I think both metal and pop will very much lean towards like light shows, you know, stage theatrics. Obviously, a lot of the time we with... don't have as much flames. Yes, less flames, more um, you know, <laughs> more lights, more visuals, and probably less yeah, more more lasers than flames. But yeah, <laughs> less melted people in the front row. You know, security guards with their hair on heart fire. That's what they're all, all security guards are bald. Um, but the, <laughs> the funny thing is, is that like, you know, J-pop, you get like their big stage show. But I, I think actually one of the bands, I, I know that lots of people are not as much into their music, but I am going to say, if someone wants to see an example of pop working, whether you like their music or not, I think Alia are a great example in that they're big, they're theatric, they have, um, so their lineup, they have Singer, who she she bounces around the stage like you would not believe. Singer, guitarist, bassist, drummer, violin, and keyboard. So, you know, they got violin and keyboard, so you can imagine the sounds of their songs, they get really quite creative with their songs. They can go heavy, they can go light. You know, they can drop a ballad. The keyboard they... can go, a keyboard can do a lot, a lot of things. It, it can do anything. It's not really, you can you, you don't really know what that keyboard does if you haven't heard it yet. Because like Gacharic Spin Oreo, it's like crazy. But I just today listened to another. It was like a really like more classic metal song, which used the keyboard to add like choirs and stuff. Yeah, um, and that's the thing. It can be very anything. diverse. Yeah, uh, it can be heavy. You can put in like a really distorted saw synth and make it heavy as hell, um, or it can be light it can be a piano um anyway mm. uh, sorry Finish. Uh, yeah i'll just quickly say i know you were talking about neil with um is gatrick spin count as pop i would say that they're a good example actually along with alia they're probably even a better example of how yes that in my opinion they are pop because their music as mental as it is is obviously designed 
to be likable. I mean, you look at things like Kachi Kachiyama, there, which again, I hold that up as both a recent and fantastic example of what they do. That song is obviously designed to appeal to the masses, and yet it's not afraid to go absolutely berserk. So yeah, um, Gatrick Spin, we are claiming them. We are claiming them. They're one of ours. <laughs> I love them as well. But that's interesting because I wanted to ask you, have you checked out Kushuni yet? Kushuni. It's going to be one of those ones where... Is that the one which is Q, U... It's a C, then an O with the two dots, and then S, H, U, N, I, E. Yeah, see, I have checked them out. They were on my Twitch stream. I can never remember which band they are. I think I've heard like three songs of theirs through um, like Twitch now, and I always forget which band they are. But um, so I would really... Uh would like to hear your opinion on that because to me that is a group that i would say their sound in general like the just the basic sound of it i would absolutely say this is pop music or like a bit of rocky pop music but the music itself it's not really accessible in my opinion <laughs> so i would like to know your opinion if you would consider this pop or more like experimental I am just loading up a picture now just so I can see if I can um, recognize them from that. But um, yeah, see... Yeah, it's mostly the girl, like pink hair. Yeah, it, it might well be that I wouldn't uh, re recognize them. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I've definitely heard them. I've heard them several times on the Twitch, but I don't immediately recognize which song of theirs it was. But okay, um, I think that maybe that would be something worth me doing is checking out them as well and talking about that. But for me, like, yeah, I... <sighs> Before even knowing what I'm judging here, my simple feeling would be it's... And this is maybe where we have to define the difference between what J-pop is and Western pop. Uh, I know we've been doing that for a while, but this is probably where we have to be a little bit more strict about that, is that for me, it would be pop, in my opinion, regardless of any sounds it uses, any genre it uses, if it's clearly trying to be a song that anyone can get into. And I know some people might not like that definition because some people would like listen to, say, maybe something like a Metallica song and say, well, anyone can get into this. And I would argue, because, no, no, that, that's not actually true. Like, I, this, I've yeah, heard of Metallica. With that definition, I'd say Kirshuni isn't pop uh, okay. using that definition. But like, then I would like to know what is it in your opinion? Like, what genre? I will have to check that. But this actually brings me on to one question which I really want to ask you about. Um, so one of the reasons why, so it just popped into my head when I said that, and I wanted to mention this earlier, but I need to bring this, because this needs to be mentioned in this video. Um, the reason why I'd say that Metallica can virtually never be considered pop is, um, even if it's like a, a song like Enter Sandman that everyone can sort of enjoy, is because the vocals are so scratchy and growly that it's just kind of like to, wh whatever he's singing, to like 50% or more of your audience is going to be like, yeah, but that's not really singing. It's going to be something where they're going to listen to it. And I think this is probably one of the few limitations. Well, I don't personally consider it a limitation, but I know a lot of other people would consider this to be a limitation. Is that in pop, you can have a growler. You can have someone like Passcode, you know, where they got Emily in there. But ultimately, you have to have some kind of sung vocal. I guess that's the thing because that's kind of the one thing where most people would be inflexible. They need to have a, a clear voice singing. Um, so but doesn't that, coming back to the very beginning of mm. our talk, like isn't that um, dependent on like how the general public perceives this? Like if the majority of people would in prefer like growling vocals, then it maybe would be different. I agree. Um, however, I would say this, this is, uh, as I mentioned... It's not the case, obviously, but... Yeah, so if it was the other way around, I, I would agree with you on that. But I would say that the interesting thing is, and someone's going to think of an example to correct me, I'm sure, but the in interesting thing is, is that as a general, most people won't accept that. That is the one interesting point where I think most people are inflexible. I mean, you can have pop, that features metal vocals. You can have pop that features rap. 
um, yeah, pop that features most things. But if the entire vocal line is kind of like a growly, snarly thing, I think that I can't think of any examples of pop where that would be we could safely call it a pop song if it was that. I think that would be one limitation, um, which is interesting because I, th I often think of that as being kind of like a niche style of vocals. But to most people in the hard rock, but especially the metal community, it's a very primary style of vocal. It's it's really not a niche at all. It's, it's like, well, that's like one of the core tenets. If anything, like Love Bites are the outlier for having clean vocals. They're, they're, the, they're the exception rather than the rule. Uh, the exception that proves yeah. the rule, you might even say. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that maybe is the one limitation on pop. But, um, like, snarly vocals, I, I get it. But, like, sc the screamo thing is kind of what I really wanted to ask you about. Because, as I said, that's the one I really struggle with. But you really, you gave that a heartfelt defense in your video with Neon. So I'm kind of intrigued. You know, I, 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 like how I feel about screams. Yeah, I... So you, you made a good point, but I want to let you just repeat that quickly again. Make the case for Screamo. Not that I hate all of it, but I would say for every single thing I like in Screamo, there's probably eight or nine that I don't like. Yeah, I think what I said and what I still feel like the same about is that I personally need some diversity in this style of singing. Mm. But yeah, I think it's not... The, that's probably the thing. Like with clean vocals, you you kind of it's easier to put variation in you can like go into head voice chest voice things like that you can switch it up rather easily in in screams a lot of times the singers they just are able to produce like one kind of growl or scream and if they use that one type the whole song i also feel like that's yeah too repetitive um can I you give an example else. of like a, a good one and a bad one? Because I mean, I think we agree, Hannah. Yeah, Beer like is good one, one obviously, um, Hannah Bier again, mm. because yeah, I think their vocal, everything they do vocally, it's insane. It's not just the screams, uh, screams and growls and different types of those as well, but also mixed with all their clean and kawaii vocals and different singers. I really love their vocal production. Yeah, the vocals that's exactly have so what much I love variation. the most. Yeah, I, I love how much variation. Like there. everything, put just put everything in. <laughs> yeah, I mean they they'll that's do kind of rap, they'll do it. pop, they'll got like Matsuri's got. I really like Matsuri's voice. I know not everyone agrees, but I really like her voice. Um, uh, Yukina, I, I, although I think there's too much of the screamo stuff, I will admit that at least when she does the screamo stuff, it tends to be quite varied. I did say I didn't think that was the case in Toso. I thought it was too much and it was a bit too much the same thing for me but in most of their songs i do think that she does provide a variation i still for me the gold standard is still emily both when she was in lady baby and passcode she's the one person her screamo stuff i i have really no problem with it, it it's it just works really? because yeah. that's one i don't it's not my favorite <laughs> really all right okay yeah. okay any particular reason i don't know that's because that's uh, what kind of what I just said? Her scream to me feels like there's not a huge lot of variation in it. For me, the variation like that I'm hearing. Like Yukina. So okay, when I'm thinking variation, I'm thinking variation a lot in pitch, like the it's it's not musical pitch, but pitch and expression. Yeah. Like her force and her pitch moves around a lot, which is one of the reasons why I find her very comparatively easy really? well, because to me it, i don't feel about like that about her really? to me it sounds pretty samey really that's intriguing so i i am i am definitely the i'm definitely the uh the the, the blind man in the art gallery here but um you know i i i am uh i'm intrigued about that Taste differ. <laughs> <laughs> well it's interesting though because i'm trying to sort of get an understanding of uh how you feel about i um, so one of the ones where i really dislike it which is interesting because I love her singing voice is the lass from Nemophila. Like I love her singing voice, but her screamo stuff, I just, I can't stand it. For me, it's just white noise. There's no variation. It's just like, ah, that I absolutely love. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to me, Benedict? But You're trying to win me over. It's, that's why I said like tastes differ because you probably, you don't want what I like about that scream in absolutely. your music. 
I mean, and once again, I mean, to we... me, I mean, I would say this scream, it's one of the most fierce and aggressive screams that I ever heard. It's, to and me, it's like the most thin, it's really it scratchy, like high pitched. Yeah, that's why, it's, that's why it's, to me, that's why it's not fierce. It, it, I mean, I don't want to hear that sort of, uh, uh, I don't like that, you know, but the, the high pitched screechy one, it, it sounds lacking in any power. It sounds like she's, uh, really, it sounds like. I mean, I imagine if you took away the music and just looked at her in the studio, it would be no louder than listening to someone talk. It would just be like, la, 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 la. it doesn't sound loud. Well, that's There's the no case projection. with all of screams. I don't know. If I, if I hear Yukina or Emily, I would imagine that, yeah, if I was in front of her, it's, it's never going to be as loud as full throat singing. But I would imagine that it would be a feeling of power, like actually standing in front of her and hearing it. that's just your perception. Perhaps. I would say. But um, I do also I think, think both I think... of those styles are pretty much the same volume, probably, if you're standing right in front of them. I, I, I mean, I, I'm willing to be proven wrong, and I might well be wrong. Um, well, I, I don't know for sure, but... but that's kind of what I got from everything I know about harsh vocals. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I mean, this is, this is an area where you probably have more to work from than me. Um, I, I can cut, I can see it a little bit. The more I think about it with Nemophila, I can see it a little bit because she does seem to really have. You can you can feel the emotion. Like she definitely like projects an emotion. It's just weird because it's like a, a it's like hear someone play like a really angry like full on heavy metal beat through a toy drum kit. It just it does. It's like I can <laughs> I know that you're angry. I can I can feel that, but it's not coming across in the sound. It's like I can. I get it, but it's just not coming across. So that's really interesting that you said that. Yeah, I find that really interesting that. as well because, especially that you said, like, there's not, I don't think, as you said, I think it's not very powerful. No, it doesn't to feel me powerful it's exactly, at all to me. To me, it's exactly the opposite. Wow. It feels really powerful. I definitely want to listen to The first to this. time I heard Dissension, I was really blown away by her scream. By and then I was kind of disappointed because. Song by them. Yeah, for me, one of my favorites. Because yes! I love this. this you know, is great. after that, I checked out more, and I was like, "Oh, I want to hear that scream more." And then I was kind of disappointed because wow. not a lot of the songs have as much of that scream in. I uh, love yeah. this. This is so cool. Um, partly because I mean, I was going to say a moment ago, uh, but you, you were making a good point. But um, I was going to say before, it's really interesting because we both like Hannah Beer, but we clearly like Hannah Beer for the absolute opposite reasons. You know, which I really love. I mean, okay, there's some similar. We both like the variation, but we both we're both looking forward to a different moment in each song. I think. Um, I think and... that's just a testament for how much is in Japanese music, because there's so much for all kinds of different groups to enjoy, and not just like Western style pop or metal. It's just this is the thing, like it or not. I, I'm actually going to ask, and so anyone who's been listening to this uh, all the way through. I want, this is something I'm really genuinely fascinated. I want you guys to put this in the comments. And this is not a competition. Don't do this as a popularity contest. I want you to hear your genuine opinions like me and Benedict have been sharing today. Um, specifically in regards to, because we both know these, Yukina, Emily, and it, it's, it's Tamu's the drummer, isn't she in Nemophila? What's the name of the singer? Is it Mayu is the singer and Tamu's the drummer? Or is it the other yeah, one? Mayu is the singer. Mayu is the singer. Okay. And I'm not sure, I don't know about the drummer. I think, yeah, Tam is the drummer, I'm sure. But, um, so, so between those three, Mayu, Emily, and Yukina, what order would you personally put them in? Again, this is not like a popularity contest. I'm just really intrigued by how generally people would balance that out. I'd really love to know what you guys would say in the comments. Um, and, you know, to maybe mention what order in quantity of power or enjoyment. You know, you could do two different lists for that. But i really like to see what most people think because... I'm fascinated for me because, again, I know I'm the outsider on this. I can enjoy some of the Scream stuff, but I'm definitely the outsider on this. So I'm really intrigued that my opinion is coming pretty much opposite to uh, Benedict's there. That, that, I, I really want to go listen to some more now and really get a feel for that. But um, I, 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 think, um, I think we've made a good case for this. We've covered so much in this conversation. So I'm really intrigued what people think on most of this. I still stand by the fact that for me... But think about that, actually... Hmm with what howard said because baby metal is getting very popular actually howard said baby metal is pop <gasps> yeah i i'm i think 
Well, Baby Metal is in that crossroads where it's clearly designed to be accessible and it's, I know you were joking, but for me, it's in, the, it's in that prime territory. Um, and their whole goal was to mix J-pop and metal. I think they've mixed yeah, yeah, pop absolutely. with metal. Uh, the J-pop aspects kind of started to filter out and now they're more just mixing pop as a general thesis, you know, pop, metal. But um, yeah, for me, they are in that space. But yeah, I, so I, I would say that they are metal, but they are also pop. Um, they are, you know, I, I, would, uh, I would argue. I mean, that's why they are my favorite band, because they mix so much. And I think it's always the most interesting music is something new to me. Yeah. That's why I love them. Um, also, I, I will give a, a shout. I've been listening to a lot of Wagamama Rakia recently. I do really enjoy Wagamama Rakia. And um, I think they are, they're, they're definitely a bit of an edge lord band. They like to do their edgy sounds. And um, like the lead singer from them, I, I never remember her name, but she is, like, you look at her solo stuff, she is the most edgy person in the world. But they, they kind of do a good job of like both being pop and metal. And there's so much of that fusion in Japan, you know, the way Pasco do it, the way Wakamama Rakia do it, the way that um, Lady Baby do it, the way that Baby Metal do it, the way that so many of these groups mix pop and metal has been like a really defining thing in Japan. And I think that's actually probably a good way to round this up is that Japan has been so good at finding that crossroads between the two and doing something really interesting. Um, yeah, but I wouldn't even say just those two, even other genres. Yeah. Because, for example, yeah. I before we did this video, I listened to some of uh, Hoshimashi Suisei and Ado again. And it is really good music, I have to say. And there are a lot of different like genres, whatever yeah. you want, not just metal, but uh, like rock and funk and jazz and blues and I don't know what else. I mean, for the sake of this there. conversation, that's kind of what I was saying. But yeah, I mean, I, 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 mean, I would even go like, like Gatrick Spin, you know, Gatrick Spin, they yeah, are mixing yeah, yeah. so many styles. You know, a lot of the pop groups, you know, you listen to the popular groups, they're using, I mentioned about sort of jazz and like Latin rhythms, they're coming in. Um, there's. Yeah, know, I think that's kind of why Japan is getting this hype, this music renaissance or revolution, however you want to call it, because it just sounds so fresh. Because they mix everything together, they kind of create new stuff, and that's what, what I think the biggest thing that western music is missing is like innovation but i i i totally agree but and i don't know if this is just the door being slowly pulled open but for me what i sometimes feel disappointed about is that like western audiences are open to that but only if it comes with a distorted guitar you know i mean so th this is and I, and I did I did say this the other day. I do that believe speaks that, for metal fans. Well, yeah, and I, I think the well, reason is, is pop fans. I think that because in the West, pop fans as a general, to like Western pop, you probably have to be not really into music. So that's probably why. And the people who are that's in, a pretty pretty harsh burn. Well, I hate to say it, it pretty much plays out. I mean, I but, agree, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you look at like um, Western metal and rock and whether it be my thing or not, these are people as a general who are into music. Yeah, you get the posers who just like to be edgy, but there, a lot of them are genuine into music. And there is a genuine heavy music scene in the West, which there isn't so much for pop. So I think that's yeah, but why still they don't manage to... to get it the same way as the Japanese people. Yes, but I accept why if you are taking someone who's not heard Japanese music, you're more likely to get through to a heavy music fan because they're probably more actually looking for good music to enjoy than a Western pop fan who probably is not. They're just looking for something catchy to know. I mean, it might be. I never actually tried uh, because if I imagine like someone is listening to, I don't know, what's popular in the west right now like miley cyrus or things like that and then you show them like <laughs> like some yeah. don't you think if you show them like some japanese awesome pop music some awesome j-pop that they will say like whoa this can be pop as well now i could be cynical and we've both said that we are approaching this from our position of already being music fans i can't help but feel that I think the majority, not all, not all, but the majority of pop fans in most Western countries that at least I'm familiar with, the UK, US, if they heard J-pop, they'd go, oh, isn't that sweet? Oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Oh, and I, but they wouldn't take it seriously. I don't think they would okay. take it seriously. 
Um, I could be wrong. I really could be wrong. And I would love to be wrong because I would love the Japanese pop scene to have a revolution. But for me, K-pop really it exploded in the West because it was it was bright and colorful when Western pop had become relatively dull and dour and a bit too politicized. It was fun, it bright, had pretty people doing pretty things. And it was musically more interesting than the Western pop music, but it was still very comparatively cookie cutter compared to, and that's been told by the fact that so many K-pop songs are now very formulaic. The, to me, it's, it's nice, but it doesn't really show that I think that people were open to something a little bit cleverer than what they had, but it doesn't to me feel like the Western pop fans are really ready for something really to take them out of their comfort zone. I think, you okay. know, I think generations have passed. We are too many generations away from like the Bohemian Rhapsody. We're too many. Um, I know radio is not the thing, but you know, popular culture just does not play enough interesting music to interesting. I, I hope I'm wrong. I just feel like the receptive. Yeah, I think you're right on that one. Rock stuff. So, right. I find it very interesting that you say that about pop, because to me that was always the stereotype about like metalheads that they are like these old metalheads that only like their groups and everything else. I don't know. They listen to like baby metal. Oh, what's that shit? Well, th that's where I'm going to draw the next level though, because although I think Western and probably pop... that exists in all kinds of genres, I guess. Although I think Western pop fans are probably the ones who are least open to trying something new. This is where I get to that next level with the Western metal fans in that I love that they're embracing Japan. I really do. But I think it's a struggle to get them to take seriously Western uh, Japanese pop. And I think that in actuality, there's a lot there for them. There's a lot that they would really love. But I think there are a lot of barriers. And maybe one of those barriers is unfortunately the sort of AKB 48 thing is like, oh, they, they probably think of Japanese pop as being like a bunch of schoolgirls dancing around, which doesn't help. But there's a lot more which isn't that than is that. So, um, yeah, I, I can't help but feel that maybe there are a lot of them who are like, well, that's not metal. Or that's not rock. Or, but, um, you know, uh, yeah, so I do want more people to listen to Unlucky Morpheus, who I still can't believe only have like. 40,000 subs. I couldn't believe when I found that out. Um, Alia. Alia are a great example. Um, you know, bands like that, you know, I want to see more Western people taking in bands like that because I think there is a lot there that if they accept, yeah, it's not loud and hasn't got distorted guitars and it's not angry. Like with you, metal fans don't always need angry music. It's like, this is a different way to soothe the angry beast inside. But that's also why I think Japanese music works so well, probably also for metalheads, because like I also said in the metal video, just add some metal. You know, a lot of the pop that I like, I would still say... I remember I you saying say, that! Just add some metal to it and it brings it up even more. I See, this is what this is another one that I actually wanted to follow up. This, that's, this is the main that's bone part I had of to the do. essence of metal, like the power, because... This is metal the... is the most powerful genre, I will still say that. Nah, nah, it can be powerful, but it's not the most powerful. I mean... It's the most powerful. This is the other bone <laughs> I had to pick with you, though, is because you said just add metal. I'm like, why? Why? It, it makes it more powerful, more... more. Yeah. All right, it's okay. It's more here's what the, I want. Here's the, ca here's the counter. <laughs> West... Uh, sorry, Japanese pop can add metal. And then, when it's done it can put it back in the cupboard. Metal can't do that. Metal has to keep the metal. Oh, metal can do that. Metal can add pop, and then if it wants, it can but throw it away as well. But it's still going to be distorted guitars. It's still going to yeah, not sure. be able to relax pop away. Pop will always be pop, even if it adds metal. But I think... pop is not a sound. It's, a, it's more of a thesis. It's more of an approach than a sound. So there are no limitations. Yeah, you can yeah, literally true. have any sound. So I would say, I would say that Adding metal, yeah. But wouldn't I, I, you say like the general people would say pop, consider pop a music genre? I think that's a common... Not like the, just the idea. I think that's a common error. Again, maybe perpetrated by the fact that obviously what is popular will often have a sound. So if I asked you what is pop in the 2020s, you would probably be able to define a sound, at least in the West you'd be able to define the sound. This is what pop is. Um, 
and then 10 years later it would be something different and then 10 years later it would be something different again now that means that pop has a defined sound that changes whereas in japan it's like pop is all of those decades at the same time and more because it's like it it isn't yeah i think the lack of concern about what is cool is very telling because there is a fashion sound a sound fashion in the west whereas in japan there isn't a fashionable sound um, there will be certain things that are in because they're new but you can have a song a song that sounds very dated i mean atarashi gako came up with that song as uh, otone blue or, or, or something like that that song sounded so 80s it sounded so out of date really popular though because people didn't listen to it and go oh that's old-fashioned they went oh that's cool um mm. you know it's like there is you can literally have all of those sounds right now just make it work um and that to me is the power of like a uh japanese pop but it's also and why at some metal. <laughs> but this is also why the very thing that makes people think that pop is a genre is because yeah, it is yeah. fashionable in the west but in japan it is not tied to a fashion which is why you see in the light of day that it is not a genre it is a it's a thesis it's an approach it's a yeah, but, it's I a mean, then mindset you cannot really com even but then you cannot really even compare metal to pop and that's because metal can be in. pop. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, when they meet. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, and I, I agree. Metal can be pop. And the funny thing about this, so this axis of how heavy it is, that's very much just a thing. But this axis of how accessible it is, this axis is dependent on the public. This is the, uh, on how malleable your public are. So in again, in the West, you might find this line is much higher because people are less open to things. Again, I hope not, but based on the evidence we have to work with. Whereas in Japan, this line comes much lower because people are more exposed to more different things and they're more willing to take more crazy stuff and consider it pop. So, I mean, you heard that Bish song I played you and you were like, wait, is this, is this a... And the same thing with Anno. You were like... More like this... punk to me. Yeah, you said that with Anno, you said that with Bish. Um, I did admittedly play you punkier songs by both of them. But because, yeah that is still pop in japan because we can play down here we can have all of this um so yeah i think uh, but that's probably why pop is so unpopular in the west because, because you connected to like this mundane boring repetitive things you hear on the radio here that's why and, i hate yeah it that's too. just not good music and then you think oh this is pop music okay i don't like pop music and then you don't even <laughs> get to the yeah. great stuff i i a hundred percent agree um and i think the fact that i mean we both said that we don't like you don't like the uh the the, the western version of metal as much as the japanese version i don't like the western version of pop as much as the mostly yeah um but i would say that's the interesting thing is that with you you prefer and correct me if i'm wrong you prefer japanese metal to western metal for me like i love Japanese pop, and I really can't stand Western pop. So for me, the separation but, uh, have of quality. The same thing with pop. Yeah. In metal, it's also pretty. It's uh, not as much of a difference. <laughs> I, I I probably would even agree on that. I mean, I really don't like Western metal. I really don't. But I would certainly prefer it to Western pop. I think. I think it's I always difficult to. Uh, I don't. I don't really like it. I always hate it when I have to generalize things. Yeah. I mean, because we... there are really great groups from the West. Yeah. I mean, Polyphia, Revocation, Nightwish, even Ginger. Those are absolutely top notch groups, in my opinion. Yeah. But I... yeah, we're, there we're... are a lot of other groups that are not as much. <laughs> we're talking more about the scene, I think, aren't we? The, the general ethos yeah. of the scene. Um, all right. So I, I'm going to ask because uh, I, I was going to round this up about 30 minutes ago, but then we had a really interesting conversation. So I'm yeah. happy to just leave this guy. But as, <laughs> as I maybe should as put I a stop to it, I was about to say, you've got to go quite soon, but I just want to ask you last and not least, because in all, this is all in good fun. But the truth is, is that we all like all three of us listen to a lot of this different music. I'm kind of intrigued. Is there anything you would say you enjoy at the moment that you definitely would say, yeah, that's just really pop, but I can't help it. It works for me. Is yeah, that... I have something. Can we have some um, I mean, I don't listen to it as much. And I even would say 
I mean, I played one of that song. I have two things, actually. One is I kind of tried to introduce you last time to Future Funk, which in my opinion yes. is pretty pop. If you go about, about the definition that it should be accessible. You nearly killed Neon with that. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of enjoyed it. I just didn't think it would be a good idea to hear it every morning for eternity, which was the question at the time. But still, I, I yeah, think, yeah, I, sure, think sure. I don't want to get into that, that as, uh, too much. But that's um, <laughs> that's something I absolutely love. I just love the genre. Um, and also, you know, I've tried to get into some K-pop at one point, but I really didn't enjoy it. I don't know. There wasn't a lot. I clicked through it. It was all pretty too boring for my taste it's but uh, i discovered luna odd eye circle which has a couple of songs i think luna is a pretty good big group and odd eye circle is some kind of separate thing of that i'm not an expert okay okay <laughs> but they have some songs uh, some songs <laughs> that i really find <laughs> <Some songs>. uh, <laughs> interesting <laughs> They have some thongs as well, I'm sure, but I hope that's not bad. Yeah, of it. some thongs probably too. <laughs> no, but also, yeah, more elements than the usual pop, and you know, some rap, some different vocal styles, some cool electronic beats, and not just that mundane, repetitive stuff. Well, um, I, I appreciate you putting those forwards, and I, I'm going to say here because I know you've got to go in a minute anyway. Cause, but um. I, I just want to say that I actually really enjoyed this. Uh, I hope everyone at home enjoyed it. I know this is a fit in the same way that the previous video was Neon making his case and you being the moderator. This was kind of me ranting and you being the moderator again. But I really appreciate that. I loved our talk about the Screamo stuff. I loved our talk about what defines pop and metal. There was a lot about this. Yeah, to be honest, I, really I kind of think it. differently about pop now because I also, when I thought about pop before, I know I knew it comes from popular, but to me, it also was a musical genre. Yeah, um, but now I'm kind of looking at it a bit differently. I, I'm, I'm really good. I, I mean, there will always be some stuff where you go, oh, that's definitely the pop thing. But I do think that they're looking at it in that way is the best way I can describe it. But this yeah, was yeah. this was fun. I enjoyed this. Maybe just because I like the sound of and my And you voice. check out Koshuni. Yes, I need, I need to go double check. which <laughs> I've definitely heard them, I know, because I got criticized the last time we did this and I said I didn't know who they were. Like one of the yeah, people in yeah, chat was like, how would you have heard them? <laughs> All right. Let's round this up. Say thank you to everyone at home. Do all the likey, subscribey stuff. You know how it works. And until we see you next time here, keep your ears to the east. <laughs>